All right, welcome once again. We'll be shedding a little more insight into the words aggradation, retrogradation, and progradation. All right, so progradation is said to occur when progressively younger parasequences are deposited further based in words. Right, so the key characteristics have been highlighted here. First of all, the rate of strata deposition is greater than that of accommodation. That means we have more sediments coming uh, from the land into the basinal areas at a faster rate than uh, amount of space is being created. So, and when that happens, um, we have the sediments building out towards the sea, right? And that's what we call progradation. And this is often associated with um, a relative uh, fall in sea level. So what uh, normally happens is that at the top of each parasequence, what we observe in this section is that the fascis at each parasequence becomes progressively more proximal. So in a vertical section, I will have a fascis above that is has come from uh, the land sitting, um, you know, sitting on top of a fascis below it that is more from the basinal area. Now, retrogradation, uh, in the other sense, more like the opposite of progradation. And that is actually a stacking pattern where we have progressively um, younger parasequences deposited further landwards. And uh, the key characteristics of the retrogradational um, stacking um, is, one, we have strata deposition. What it just tells us, first of all, is that strata deposition is occurring at a rate that is lesser than the rate at which um, accommodation is formed. That means that we have lesser sediments coming from the land into the sea, right, than the amount of space available for those sediments and, and of course, uh, related um, every other deposits to occupy. And that is often associated with uh, when, you, when you have relative rise in sea level. So typically in a vertical section, uh, for a retrogradational uh, stacking pattern, what you observe is that you, uh, at the top of each parasequence, you notice that um, the parasequences become progressively distal at the upper section, upper half of each parasequence than the one, than the, um, the lower uh, half or lower section of that same parasequence. Um, aggradation is also another um, stacking pattern which we've discussed earlier on, uh, but again, I want to shed more light on this. So, an aggradational stacking pattern is said to occur when both the younger and the older strata of, of similar bathymetry. That means you're looking at in a section where the sediments, the uh, fascias above and below, are not getting progressively um, deeper or shallower. So you have kind of related, you know, from similar environments stacked up on top of each other. So key characteristics one, the rate of the strata, it tells us that the rate of strata deposition was the same as that of accommodation. So that means the amount of sediment coming into the basin was just enough for the amount of space that was being created at the same time. So there's no um, progressive, there was no, uh, you know, effective uh, movement of the shoreline to the, towards the sea or towards the land. And that is often associated with when you have steady state uh, sea level. That means that the sea level has risen and has gotten to a point where it is now stable. It's not moving basinward. It's not moving um, basinward, neither is it moving landwards. In a vertical section, um, again, what we see for an aggradational stacking uh, pattern is that the fascists at the top of each part sequence are about the same bathymetry as the ones below it. All right, so let's talk degradation. So degradational, well, uh, some of us will argue that this is not a stacking pattern, but degradation just refers to where you have an evidence of erosion or removal of part of um, what has been deposited um, before. So, and that occurs, uh, especially in subaerially sub exposed part of the shelf, where um, you have the sea level has actually fallen below a certain point where the shelf is exposed and part of what is exposed has been eroded, right? Uh, and that kind of creates some kind of missing uh, section. And that's, that is typical of the late um, 
stage of the high stand system struct or the early phase of the low stand uh, system struct. Right, so this section is just kind of showing us uh, a bit of pictorial view of retrograding, aggrading, and prograding um, um, parasequences. So when you hear the when you hear retrograding, you think of the shoreline as moving towards the land. Um, so it's moving up, but inwards. That's it's, the sea level is still moving up, still rising, but it's moving landwards. That's in the direction of the red arrow. If it's aggrading, that means the sea level is just about steady. It's neither moving outwards to the sea, neither is it moving inwards to the land. So it's just about the same. Uh, well, I mean, the shoreline is neither moving outwards to the sea, neither is it moving, uh, you know, towards the land. So it's just about the same position because the rate at which the sea level uh, is falling is the same at which the sea at, at which um, the same rate at which sediments are coming in from the onshore areas into the basinal area. So there's really no uh, effective change in position of the shoreline. For progradation, we're saying at that time, the sediments coming in are coming in at a faster rate than the amount of space that is available for the sediments to occupy. So overall, you have the sediments building out towards the sea. So the shoreline is actually moving in the direction of the blue arrow. In this context, they're moving out and then Upwards, upwards, but out in the prograding uh, systems. Um, in the other, in the in the not very common sense of it, the grading, as shown here, will be where you have a direct, a vertical incision or cut or erosion of a pre-existing um, stratigraphic section, which could be you know, in size valleys or canyons, or where you have slope failures and slump. And like I mentioned, that is usually in the late. Um, part of the high stand system struct or the early phase of the low stand um, system struct. All right, so we'll look a little bit at parasequence uh, stacking patterns, but in this case, in different depositional settings. Right, so this example shows um, an alluvial, fluvial, or deltaic setting. So what we see here is um, for a fluvial to alluvial, you have a very a typical finding upwards uh, sequence with uh, erosive, lag based. Uh, sediments or sandy units uh, with some indication of cross bedded uh, fasces, and then you uh, have horizontal, uh, probably laminated fasces with some evidence of uh, plant roots above that. For a prograding delta, we see um, a coarsening upward uh, power sequence. In this case, uh, it's more you know, you know, muddy in the lower half and it gets sandy as you go to the upper sections. Uh, another thing to note is that the thickness of the sandy units become uh, better developed. Internally, you see uh, more horizontal bedded um, um, units, not cross bed like we saw in the fluvial or alluvial setting. In a transgressive data, uh, it's a fine upward sequence, but the difference here is internally you don't have the cross bedded um, fascias like we saw in the fluvial uh, and alluvial model. So go, going a bit uh, further basing word from alluvial, this, in this context, we're looking at marine uh, setting. So what we see here uh, is in the prograding marine shelf is a typical uh, coasting upward um, um, growing size or para sequence. Uh, upper section of it shows indication of cross beds, while the lower half of it shows more mud content, but, in this, but again with um, horizontal bedded units. In the proximal in the transgressive marine sh uh, shelf, we have two versions of a finding upward uh, sequence. In the proximal areas, you have uh, more of you know lag-based you know uh, units underlying, well, overlain by cross-bedded and eventually um, you know, more like root plants or muddy fascias above it. But in the distal areas, we like further out into the basin, we see more of you know. Um, horizontal bedded or horizontal laminated units all the way across. But overall, we see a, a gradual reduction in grain size from the bottom to the upper part of the, of the, of the log for the distal uh, transgressive marine shelf. So all the way out to the deep water, uh, for a slope channel, we see very nice blocky sands with uh, indication of uh, some... Uh, channelized uh, systems in the lower uh, half and then the upper half you see more repetition of muddy unit with uh, 
horizontal laminated um, uh, sandy um, fascis, thin bedded sandy fascis in the upper section. In the mid fan area, we see a bit of, you know, you know, channelized geometry, but not with a lot of incision, but more like weakly confined uh, channel types that eventually become final upwards. And then in, the, in that case, you now have repeated units of muddy units and uh, horizontal bedded or laminated um, 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 fascis that becomes uh, muddy at the upper section. But in the basin plane, you have a bit of, you know, very rare preservation of um, horizontal laminated sands. Uh, but one other thing to see that distinguishes this one is that it's really um, very muddy. You have a huge portion of it uh, indicating more of uh, offshore muds. Okay. All right. So thanks. That's uh, what we have for this um, module. Um, in the next uh, discussion, we'll be looking at system tracts, and uh, hopefully um, we'll, we'll be able to connect the dots and put the whole story together. So thanks for your time. Um, if you do have questions or comments, just let me know. You can reach out to me on YouTube or on our Facebook page. Thanks. <laughs>